You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. If you are going to be a new Republican in Congress, it's best not to show your ass when you get there. Now, now we already seen crazy Marjorie uh, Green. I mean, we, we know how ignorant she is. And uh, there's a black Republican from Utah who has consistently shown his ass on Fox News, sound like a damn fool, a former NFL player, Burgess Owens. Well, Burgess decided on his first day as a member of the House Judiciary Committee to school Democrats on the issue of patriotism for not supporting an amendment Republicans push requiring the Pledge of Allegiance at all meetings. Y'all, now he proposed that his, that, that his peers on the committee to show leadership by standing for the flag during the pledge to show others what unity looks like. Well, Congressman Hakeem Jeffries from Brooklyn, head of the House Democratic Conference. Let's just say Hakeem had a few words for Leah Burgess. Play. I was blessed to grow up in the Deep South, 60s, days of KKK, Jim Crow, segregation. I say blessed because I grew up in a community that believed in our nation, believed in God, believed in their kids, and they were going to fight to prove they could overcome any obstacle. It was a great commu uh, community that taught us the, 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 the importance of a flag. It taught us to, to, to love God, country, family, respect for women, and authority. And you know the results of that that many of you don't know about? In 1960, it was a black community that led our country to growth in the middle class. The black community that led our country and men matriculated from college. Men committed to marriage, over 70%. Percentage of entrepreneurs over 40%. Why were we kicking butt in those days? Like every other community that was not assimilated at that time, we loved our country. We believed in meritocracy. We taught our kids to stand for that flag and for what it represented. Not perfect, but the best thing in the history of mankind. I went to the University of Miami, the third black to get a scholarship, graduating in biology and chemistry. Why? Because in my segregated community, we were committed to, to education. I would go to my, my dad's laboratory every summer and work. And when a white guy told me I couldn't do it, I spent the next four years in college living in that library to prove him wrong. Because my race, like every other race, looked at this country as a place of second chances, of opportunity, and big dreams. Went into the NFL in 1983, 1973. No black centers, no black quarterbacks, no black linebackers, no black middle linebackers. Why? because those are white thinking positions. $50,000 as a bonus as a first round draft choice. We have guys making $50 million today to play any position they want to, cannot, will not stand for their flag because they've been taught by their adults not to love our nation. What can we do here as leaders, guys? Let's put, about, let's put aside the partisanship, appreciate the fact that we have a body here of every color under the rainbow. Every background, it doesn't, across this country, we have black police officers, black mayors. You know, as we have more and more freedom to achieve our dreams, we seem to point more and more at other peoples for the failures that we have when we make bad, bad decisions. What is my message, guys? I'm gonna follow what uh, Congressman Lee says. It's not about words, it is about actions. 15 seconds to show our kids that we are adults, that we can agree to disagree, but we love our country enough to at least stand and represent our flag. For a young man in 73 to 83 to stand on that sideline and get teary-eyed because that flag was flying, we've lost that. We're teaching our kids, any mistake you make is somebody else's fault. That is not the way our country rolls, guys. We gotta do better than that. Why don't we start off just by one simple action. We talk about actions, one simple action as leaders Let's stand, let's 
is pledge our flag and say thank you for this opportunity to represent the people we're sent here to represent. And that we will be the example of what unity looks like, not just the word, we'll act by saying the words to bring our country together, putting our hands on our hearts and meaning it and showing everyone, doesn't matter what side of the aisle we're on, this is one thing we can agree on. I yield back. Well, the gentleman yield. Gentlemen, you. Well, not, no. Oh, I thank the distinguished chair for uh, this opportunity. I move to strike the last word. I was hoping to uh, engage with the new distinguished gentleman from Utah uh, as he sat here lecturing us uh, about patriotism, and I was just going to ask him how he voted after a violent mob attacked the Capitol to hunt down members of Congress, to hang Mike Pence, to assassinate Nancy Pelosi, to stop us from undertaking our constitutional responsibilities as part of the peaceful transfer of power. More than 100 officers seriously injured, brain injuries, head trauma, one officer lost three fingers, another officer, because of an assault on him, is likely to be blind. Officer Sicknick died, blood was spilled. Two other officers are no longer with us. And you wanna sit here and lecture us about patriotism? When you voted? to object to an election that you know Joe Biden won and perpetrated the big lie? <clears throat> I look forward to working with you. We worked with Donald Trump on criminal justice reform, the First Step Act. We worked with Donald Trump on the U.S.-Mexico-Canada trade agreement, his signature political issue. When you know if you were in the other position, you would have never worked with a Democratic president on their signature political issue, trade. But we did it because it was the right thing for America. So we're going to work with Republicans whenever and wherever possible. We did it with Donald Trump. But the notion of you coming here lecturing us on your first day before this committee it's not about words, it's about actions. You know what? Explain your actions on January 7th when you supported an insurrection. <laughs> and I was ready to have a dialogue. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. I believe the gentleman yeah. should address his comments to the chair. Can I yield? The gentleman, uh, will, does admit, gentleman will address his comments to the chair. Okay. Mr. Chair, I was happy to have a dialogue with the distinguished. Can I answer that? Will you yield? No. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I gave him. I get, Mr. Jeffrey's time. It's my time. The gentleman from New York has the floor. And you, and you don't really want any of this either. It's his time now. Yeah. But will the gentleman him, yield? I, I gave him an opportunity to yield. Will the gentleman he, yield to anybody else? He chose not to. Apparently not. So I'm going to finish my statement, and then I'll give you an opportunity to respond. All right. But you said it was not about words, it's about actions. <coughs> Those actions, Mr. Chairman, in my view, were unpatriotic to provide aid and comfort to what Republicans in many parts of the country have characterized as a violent insurrection incited by the former president of the United States of America. You also said that any mistake is not your fault in terms of what's being taught to others. That's what the former president of the United States peddled for four years. He took no responsibility for anything. And Mr. Chairman, there's some members on the other side of the aisle, including perhaps former NFL players, who defended that kind of <laughs> irresponsible behavior. So it's just hard to be lectured here, given the actions that have been taken. And I would just hope that we're going to proceed 
with some measure of truth, decency, and intellectual integrity as we make our arguments, even though we know we're going to fiercely disagree, as has been in the case in the past. I'm happy to yield. OK. Was an insurrection when in 2016, six, uh, seven of your colleagues objected? Was an insurrection for the last three uh, Republican wins, uh, presidential wins that, that they objected? No, it was not. It was a voice. It was having your people realize you had some concerns. Now, in terms of- Thank you, reclaiming my, reclaiming my time, you asked the question. <laughs> I, I would just simply say, and the impeachment managers are gonna do a great job, but a violent insurrection resulted in the spilling of American blood. People died. The Capitol was desecrated. Urine and feces was left behind. The Confederate flag was bandied about. That didn't even happen in this Capitol during the Civil War. The Trump flag was placed in the stead of the American flag. That's an insurrection. That's sedition. That's undemocratic. That's problematic. And the American thing to do is to stand up to it. I yield back. Okay. Mm. Y'all don't, don't have Burgess's response? Was there a response to that? That was no response to that? Mm. Woo. Dr. Avis Jones DeWeaver, political analyst, being Benjamin Dixon, host of Benjamin Dixon, the show, Dr. Julian Mavo, economist, president emerit of Bennett College. Uh, clearly, um, former Utah Congresswoman Mia Love um, Avis did not warn Burgess Owens, don't bring your ass to Congress trying to show up and show out and don't, don't, <laughs> don't, don't let the Brooklyn come out of Hakeem Jeffries. Ah, ah. No, she didn't <laughs> warn the brother. She ain't warned the brother. He just came on up in there all reckless and got wrecked, okay? Um, you know, it, it, it's really sad um, that you have someone that in his attempt... You know, people can have different political views. Believe it or not, I actually have some friends who happen to be Republican. But this right here, the argument that he was making was completely... Um, completely detached from fact. And we don't even have to go back decades in terms of fact. We're just going back a couple of weeks in terms of fact <laughs> when he tried to deny what happened in that chamber. Um, also, you know, um, C Congressman Jeffries picked up on this, but of his initial soliloquy, what I really focused in on was his specific statement that, quote unquote, any mistake we make is some someone else's fault. Nothing annoys me more than when you have a black person who is put into a position in order to chastise other black people, when actually the very thing that they are chastising black people for, the white people who put them there are guilty of it. And that's exactly what this is. Uh, as Representative Jeffries rightly pointed out, uh, Trump has never taken responsibility for anything. Never. First of all, let me put it like this. He doesn't take responsibility for most things. For things that happen to go right that he has nothing to do with, he will attempt to take responsibility for that. All right? Uh, and that's just one small example of this ridiculous attack on black people. Let's just be clear about who he is, why he's there, how people felt comfortable putting him there, because they saw him as someone who would put black people in their place but luckily, there was someone on that committee who rightfully put him in his place instead. Ben, the, the, the thing that, that I just really cra just cracked me up, that Burgess was, wasn't, even, wasn't even smart enough to realize how dumb he is. <laughs> and, and then he goes, well, 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 you know, when the Democrats, when Democrats objected, and Hakeem Basil was like, but we ain't tear shit up. <laughs> we didn't sit here and tell folks to come in and piss all over the Capitol. We didn't tell them to beat and kill cops. We didn't tell them to take the eyes out. Cops losing their eyes, fingers are uh, losing their fingers. And I'm sitting there going, and your ignorant ass can't figure that out? But see, this is what happens when you get some ignorant... And let me tell you something. I know a lot of black conservatives, and this is probably, they be, this is probably their reaction. Look at this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> they 
damn. Make us all look You bad. just come to Congress embarrassing us the first damn day. Yeah. Roland, this is what happened. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm being, go ahead, being, go ahead. No, I, I was going to say, I think it's the, what is it, the Dunning-Kruger effect when someone is so ignorant they don't realize how ignorant they really are and they speak out of turn. Uh, this is just an, another incident of a blackface on behalf of white supremacy. He really thought he had some ammunition trying to stand and cape for the flag. You know, well, you know, all right, God bless America, but there's a lot of stuff that has to be answered for, and we're not just going to be satisfied with tokenism and with the idea that it is more important for us to stand for the flag than it is for us to rectify what happened a few weeks ago. Um, no, he, he met his match that day. The thing here that I also f just, just, just found to be laughable, Julian, is re Republicans love to play this game of I'm more patriotic, and so it's the flag. It's the Pledge of Allegiance. It's, it's all of these, the, the, these, you know, how, how dare you kneel, you must stand. At the same party who's doing a best that has introduced more than 100 voter suppression bills. They're trying to change the voting laws in Pennsylvania and Georgia and Arizona, all over the country. And it's like, oh, so is that patriotic? See, I love this fake patriotism that they want to hold folks to. And then Burgess, you know, the white guy said this to me, you know, and I spent every day in the library proving him wrong. <laughs> I'm not wasting my time on no racist ass white people. Really? I ain't proving they I ain't proving a damn thing. Man, take your monkey ass on with your racism. <laughs> hey, here's the thing. When you play football, Regularly, you have put your brain at risk. There is a lot of data that suggests that when you play football regularly, you put your brain at risk. This boy has clearly put his brain at risk. And we saw that. Hakeem Jeffries was not even time enough for him. He was overtime. If you do that in football, I don't know, I'm not a sports fan. Uh, but he was overtime for him. These Republicans have been so hypocritical about what they want. What they really want is to win. I mean, I was on a television show with Armstrong Williams uh, about three years ago, and he said, our goal is to win. He said, our goal is not to be fair. Our goal is to win. And we're seeing this now. Their goal is to win. And so whether they have to take up for the orange man, whether they have to take up for Marjorie Green, whatever, um, whatever they'll do, they're going to do that because they want to win. Now, that woman needs to be not only institutionalized, but put into a straight jacket with a muzzle, which is what they did to enslaved people back in the day, a straight jacket and a muzzle. But nobody, everybody is okay. Well, she has a right to the First Amendment. The First Amendment that calls for an assassination of the House Speaker, give me a break. But they, these people, in the height of hypocrisy, are simmering in their nonsense. And there are few, few, but not none, few rep responsible Republicans who will deal with this. So this Burgess brother, I don't know where he came from, and I don't know where he's going, but he's going somewhere. And it's not any place close to us. But here's the deal, though. I mean, Avis, I, I, I've seen Burgess on Fox News talking all this nonsense and all this BS, and this is the game that they play, and this is where, no, 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 we gonna checkmate your punk ass. That's what we gonna yeah. do. And that's what Hakeem should have done. Exactly what he did, and then, uh, no, 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 I, I, I'm reclaiming my time, just go on, sit over there and be quiet. And then, and then all the white Republicans jumping in. Well, you ain't gonna live for house. Shut your ass up too. Be quiet. You know. But again, this, and that's why it was like the first day. This like this the first day. This is the equivalent first day of first day of school. You show your ass on the first day of school. Like you don't yeah. even wait till Friday. You on the first day of school. <laughs> on the well, first he, day. He, and the, and the whole the whole that's the equivalent. The whole class look at you like you showing your ass on the first day. Like, yeah, well, you ain't even gonna wait. 
I, that's why, you know, th this clip went viral, uh, a two-minute clip. I said, nah, I got to see the whole exchange. I, I need everybody to hear what this fool said and the full response of Hakeem Jeffries because he laid him out. And all I know is there's a dead body somewhere in the halls of Congress uh, and, and it got Burgess Owens stamped on his forehead <laughs> after he just got laid out by Hakeem. Is he related to Candace? I, I don't know. Um, you know, they show. I, I tell you right now, if your last name Owens, you ain't <laughs> trying to claim not name one of them fools. <laughs> they drink the same. That is Kool -Aid. true. That is, they drink that, the is, same that is absolutely Kool -Aid. true. Um, you know, here here's here is the 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 issue also. The thing is, this is you know, this is a difference almost like from coming from the minor leagues to the majors, right? Because he was in the echo chamber, as you mentioned, of Fox News. So, of course, he's going to get doted on. He's going to get loved. He's going to get all the praise and affection because he is repeating the ridiculous messages that they want to be repeated, or at least as much how much longer they can remain in existence until they get sued out of existence, right? Uh, and so there he was the, you know, he was the, the, the main man, the, the main man. So he comes in into this position with this false sense of certainty in himself and his um, misguided opinions, and he got checked. You know, um, this is what you call, it's like he got completely ambushed on day one um, after walking into this room thinking that he was going to be the one uh, doing the body slamming, and instead it got turned around and he himself is the one that ended up getting sacked. This, this Ben, Football. this is what happens. <laughs> this is, th see, Ben... I keep warning all these Fox News people. This is what happens when you go on Fox News where they do affirmation TV and there's nobody on the other side to check you on your craziness. And so then you figure, oh, I'm right. So then you bring that BS somewhere else, then you get your ass served, then all of a sudden it's kind of like, Damn, what happened? Because you sat over there with them crazy white folks on Fox News, Sean Hannity, <laughs> Tucker Carlson, and all the rest of them, and y'all didn't have anybody else debating. See, th there's a reason why they don't call me. There's a reason why. I mean, they don't even, like, it, and let me tell you, say that they're not calling me. I emailed them. I emailed them like, holla at a brother. Laura, Laura, that girl, the Libertarian Kennedy, Harris, Faulkner, uh, 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 Sean, Tucker, they all like, mm, no, no, that Negro crazy. We ain't go. They, they like, we know the game they play. Burgess spent too much time going on Fox News. Yak, 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 yak. And then Hakeem said, pass me some powder. Let me pimp slap this fool. <laughs> I, I didn't realize how how hilarious this panel is, and it's so true. Oh no 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 no, Ben! This is a black show. <laughs> <laughs> this is a black show. See, you ain't you ain't gonna get. Hey, ain't no a, a MSNBC, CNN. You ain't gonna get no references to baby powder and pimp slapping uh, and monkey ass. You ain't gonna get that. This is a black show. For my white viewers who love watching the show, they appreciate learning about blackness when they watch yeah. this show. Because I'm wearing a... Today's the 95th anniversary of my black high school, Jack Yates in Houston. This is a black show. <laughs> you know, I, I, I have my Vaseline right over here, and I think Hakeem already used some, and I think Burgess is going to need a little bit more because the honest truth is, is that echo chamber of Fox News really is, a, for the last four years, they've been serving an audience of one, and that's Donald Trump. And I think uh, Republicans have missed the pendulum swing, right? Like, we, we're not playing around with white supremacy anymore. White supremacy marched up those steps of the Capitol on January 6th and challenged American democracy period. And so anyone who's still lingering with this idea that they could ride Donald Trump's coattails to some modicum of success, they're sorely missing out on the reality. And if they're listening or appearing on Fox News, that's even more reason why he's completely clues to the fact that it wasn't acceptable before the insurrection. It certainly isn't acceptable to be, to kowtow and to uh, be beholden to white supremacy after we've seen how dangerous white supremacy is, not only to black people, we've known that since 1619, uh, but it's dangerous to America, um, as a whole. Yeah, because bottom line is this here. Again, uh, 
you got to check these folks where you can, uh, and that's what we all about. Every single night. We've got some of the top black experts. You're not going to see them on cable news or broadcast news because you swear black people aren't experts when it comes to this health crisis. That's why we have this show and why we do what we do every day on Roland Martin Unfiltered. Joining us right now is retired General Russell Honore. Uh, thanks for his first black surgeon general, Dr. Jocelyn Elders. John Hope Bryant, he is the founder of Operation Hope. Senator Kamala Harris of California. Dr. Sadrina Calder, retired General Lloyd Austin. Congresswoman Karen Bass, and Commissioner Omari Hardick. Bureau President in Brooklyn, Eric Adams. Dr. Joseph Graves, America's Wealth Coach, Deborah Owens. Dr. Corey A. Bear, Patel Salt. Uh, Howard University student, Pastor Jamal Bryant, a uh, doctor, uh, Christy McDowell, Benja Ajilore, senior economist at the Center for American Progress, Gilda Daniels, again, author of the book, The Crisis of Voter Suppression in America. Four stars, uh, General Kit Ward, Dr. Oliver Brooks, is president of the National Medical Association, president of the American Medical Association, Dr. Patrice Harris, Joby Benjamin, Dr. Alexia Gaffney, infectious disease specialist, Dr. George is Benjamin, uh, executive director of the Ameri American Public Health Association, Malcolm Nance, family medicine physician Dr. Jen Caudill, Dr. Tashaka Cunningham, a molecular biologist, Kat Stafford. She's a national race and ethnicity reporter for the Associated Press. Dr. Wayne A.I. Frederick, uh, who is the president of Howard University, Congresswoman Yvette Clark uh, from the state of New York, William Springs, AFL-CIO economist, uh, Andrea James, executive director of the National Council for Incarcerated and Formerly Incarcerated Women and Girls. All right, let's go to Capitol Hill. Congressman Gregory Meeks, Congresswoman Anna Johnson of Texas, Congresswoman Barbara Lee, Minnesota City. And Amy Klobuchar, mental health clinician Jamie Singletary, Prince George's County State's Attorney Aisha Braveboy, as well as Dylan uh, Harry, ACLU Justice Division strategist. Uh, Dr. Cindy Duke, uh, she's a virologist, Principal Steve Perry of Capital Prep. Health and wellness specialist Dr. Yolandra Hancock, Desmond Mead, President of the Florida Rights Restoration Coalition, Cliff Albright, who is the co founder of Black Voters Matter, Michael Harriet with the group, the Mina McWhorter, founder of Love by the Hand of Dr. Julian Malvo, economist, president. Merida Bennett College. Corner Michael Fowler is a mayor of Atlanta, Keisha Lance Bottoms, mental health therapist Suzette Clark, Justin Gibney, attorney and political strategist, and Bishop Vincent Matthews Jr., Dr. Suzette McKinney, CEO and executive director of the Illinois Medical District, Dr. Leon Madugal, president elect of the National Medical Association, Jana Bailey, Mayor of Moss Point, uh, Mississippi, uh, Mario King. We're going to keep driving this thing to make sure our people are fully aware, safe, protected from coronavirus. You get the top medical experts, the top business experts, top political experts, top religious experts, because that's why we do what we do, unapologetically and unfiltered. Ain't nobody else in the black media space doing what we do. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com.